you remember a little while ago, I did a comparison of three different types of super caps. Two of them were the Samwa fake 500 ferret 2.7 volt capacitors, one with screw mounts and one with four pin adapters. And also in that comparison, they are now inside my solar battery bank was the yellow Eton 2.7 volt 400 ferret super capacitors. And of course the Eton came out like crazy with the uh, pin one from Samwa coming out not too bad. Well, there's a new company, at least to me, but you can't find it on DigiKey or Mouser or Element 14, any of the major PAR companies. They seem to be relatively new from what you can see on their website, and they are called Amperix, A-M-P-E-R-I-C-S. And they have a couple different values. I think it's like 50, 100, maybe 200 off the top of my head. And these are 400 farad super caps. But theirs are rated for 3 volts, not 2.7, which is uh, pretty cool in its own right. So, I bought a 10-pack of these off of Amazon. They sell on their website and on Amazon. It's a little cheaper, believe it or not, to get them on Amazon. So, yeah, I picked up a 10-pack of them, had them chipped in, and ran it through some tests. So, let me bring the camera on over to the desk, and I got a nice little spreadsheet, and we can go over how good these capacitors really are. Okay, here's my nice pretty little spreadsheet I printed out for you. Super capacitor comparison. Over here we have the first, the Samwa 500 farad screw model. The Samwa 500 farad 4 pin model. The Eton, those are the yellow ones that are in this big giant box. And newcomer, Amperix. And here's a, let me get one without tape on it. Here's what they look like a little closer. Amperix, beyond batteries. AM400F, that's the model I'm using, and 400 ferret, 3 volt. Two pins, that's all there is to it. So they are on the last column here, Amperix 400 ferret, 2 pin. Now, each graph goes for each line here. The ESR that I measure in milliohms, and you can see in here, believe it or not, the Amperix is green. Okay, they are green. They are actually just the lowest barely in line with the 4-pin and actually the uh, Eton, the yellow one. They actually all came out pretty good and here's that piece of crap cap. Next we have the leakage current after 10 minutes. This is me leaving it on my power supply after charging it up from 0 to 2.7 volts at a 1 amp constant current and once it hits 2.7 I let it settle for 10 minutes and this is the amount of current it's still pulling just to maintain 2.7 volts and milliamp for it. And yeah, you can see how this crap cap skews all the data right there because it pulled 45 milliamps. The rest of them were pretty good. The four pin job was uh, four milliamps. The E time was one and a half milliamps. And these came in really close at two milliamps. They're almost just as good in that respect, at least in my testing. Third column that's interesting is voltage at 72 hours starting at 2.7 volts. This is charging the capacitors up to 2.7 volts, waiting till it finally hits its leakage current point, and then just unplugging it and putting it to the side for 72 hours and see what the voltage is when it finally settles down. So that is down here. And you see there's the crap cap again. We're all the way down to 1.07 volts. This thing's not even good for a paperweight. I'm serious. The rest of them came out really good. Um, 2.33 for the Samwa 4 pin, Eton 400 2.26, and Amperix 2.22. They're all within one tenth of a volt of each other, so that was really good. The long term uh, leakage actually calmed down on all three of them. Now, at the same time, also, remember this capacitor is also rated for 3 volts, so I tested two of them. You can see the tape's still on them. One I set at 2.7 volts and also one at 3 volts. So again, the voltage at 72 hours and I started it at 3 volts. Came out to 2.28. The extra voltage seems to be like a nice overhead while operating, but it doesn't really give you extra capacity too much in longevity. But we'll also see here the capacity. Now this is in watt hours starting at 2.7 volts and discharging down to 1 volt at a 200 milliamp constant current discharge. Again, yep, there's the crap cap, blue. Yeah, forget it. Jump! Ooh, that probably hurt. <laughs> 
Second one is Samwa 500 ferret 4 pin. That came out at 0.3179 um, watt hours. And next one, 37, 3719. Wow, that almost got me. And finally, the Amperex actually came out the best at 0.398 watt hours at 2.7. So I also redid this test again for the three volts. So I did three volt down to one volt discharge at 200 milliamps. And if you're using that extra bit, it definitely helps a lot. It's almost half a watt hour, but it will apparently bleed off a little faster. So overall, it's a really good capacitor. I like it. The other thing that's great and why I'm probably going to start using these instead of the Etons is comes down to price because they're basically the same. They're within a few percent of each other. Um, the Etons sell for about $12 in single quantities on Mouser and pretty much more expensive everywhere else. Amperix is selling on their website as of right now, July 2017. Uh, they're selling their 10 packs of these 400 ferret supercapacitors for $100. So it's $10 a capacitor. Or you go on Amazon. I believe I paid like $89. Hold on a second. Let me check that real quick. Yeah, here we go. On Amazon Prime. 10 pack high energy density 3 volt 400 ferret amperic supercapacitors. Quantity 1. $85 on Amazon. So it's a little bit cheaper. So that is why I'm going to probably keep on using these, especially since I'm planning on doing a project build in the next month or two. So if you have any questions or comments about this, go ahead and leave them in the comments down below. And also look down below in the description. I will have a link for Amperix and also on the Amazon site where it's a little bit cheaper for you to get them as well. Thank you.